You're listening to the Huddle Up Podcast with Chad Jensen and Zach Kelberman. Join Broncos Country's deep divers at milehighhuddle.com and sound off. And now it's time to drop some knowledge. Okay, we're live, but we got to let it breathe just for a moment. We got to bring on the Facebook tribe. Make sure we're all under one big tent. Bear with us just one moment here. And we are good. Welcome in, everybody, to the Huddle Up podcast, presented, as always, by Mile High Huddle, powered by Overtime Media. I'm your host, Chad Jensen. With me, as always, my partner in crime. You know him. You love him. He is Zach Kelberman. Zach, uh, I was just talking about this on Twitter. I want to say it was Mark Anthony reached out and said something to the effect of, hey, you guys got lucky. It's a it's a you know big news day on a Huddle Up pod night which as those of you who follow the show, that's our lament, right? That we never get the big news days. So far, Zach, we've been lucky in 2021. We got John Elway uh, resigning from GM duties on a Monday, one of our days. And today the Denver Broncos hired George Payton to be the next GM. What was your gut reaction though to the decision? Chad, I've been, you know, you've been on the beat a little longer. I've been covering the Broncos since 2016. And in that time, it's it's been five years now, I have not seen much to write home about. I have not seen much to celebrate. I will say today goes down as the best Broncos day in my coverage of the team in, in five seasons. To get someone of George Payton's caliber, to get someone of his ability, the fact that George Payton, the guy who spent 14 years in Minnesota, who's won division titles, multiple dozens of pro bowlers in Minnesota, the guy who's turned down so many interviews the last couple of seasons, he is the new Denver Broncos general manager. That is who they replaced John Elway with. One of the best, most revered talent acquisition experts, That one of the best scouting experts. This is a day to celebrate, Chad. This is a turning point moment for the franchise. He will rebuild Denver in one season. I put it on Facebook. I got some blowback. I don't know why. I do believe. They will be a playoff team under George Payton in 2021. This was a grand slam hire by Denver. Not a home run, a grand slam, just like Denny's. It's really, really an exciting hire. I agree. I mean, my heart, I was still kind of pining for for Terry Fontenot just because I wanted that that youth and that juice. But I think an argument can be made that George Patton, almost said it, Payton, um, has just as much in terms of juice. I mean, this is a guy that has been – you know, biding his time. He's, he's been known as very choosy, uh, very selective in terms of the opportunities for GM. And he's really been in high demand since about 2012. And, he, you know, he's rebuffed offer after offer after offer. And not only did he accept the interview with the Denver Broncos when they approached him, but he accepted the job. And so you have to ask yourselves why George Payton wanted this job, because Zach, as we talked about many, many times, this was kind of a unique situation. Yes, there are only 32 GM jobs in the world, but this one, when it turn, when it comes to a guy being picky and choosy, had a few red flags, not the least of which was, will John Elway meddle? Uh, not the least of which is, what well, what does ownership look like? Uh, the quarterback situation. There are, you know, being saddled, this is just a phrase, with a head coach, right? Having a head coach being foisted upon you that you're not hand-selecting. Quite a few things that a guy who would be typically known as, as choosy overlooked to take this job. And I think Zach, if we get down to his, um, if we get down to his actual statement, he, he kind of let everybody know why he ultimately chose it. And I want to read this real quick and serve it back over. He said that in he, he goes, quote, it is an honor to be named GM of an iconic franchise with a championship tradition, like the Denver Broncos. This organization has great resources, tremendous people, a talented young core of players and an outstanding coaching staff. In many ways, I feel like this team is a sleeping giant. For me, it is the right place and the right time for this opportunity. So, Zach, it's kind of like, you know, the that Star Wars show. There's been an awakening, <clears throat> you know. He's got a there's been an awakening. George George Payton has to, man, that's gonna trip me up because phonetically it looks like Pat right. Payton. Um, you know, he's got to figure out how to wake this sleeping giant. But do you agree that this is a sleeping giant? I mean, we were of that opinion even going into last season. And when you look at the Broncos roster, I mean, you can name the reasons why he might have been drawn to this job over maybe the Detroit opening or the Carolina opening or the Falcons opening. Look at the roster. 
uh, from Vaughn to Chubb to Cortland Sutton to Justin Simmons to Sel- Shelby Harris and go down the list there. They have the number nine overall draft pick. They will have about $40 million in salary cap space once they make a few house cleaning um, alterations to the roster, Chad. This was not an unattractive job to George Payton. And Denver is also an illustrious franchise. They're a uh, a, a tried and true, you know, a, a, a franchise not too far removed from being a, a top of the mountaintop, Chad. And he thinks he can get him back there. And... um I, I just think not everyone can live in the shadows for too long. Nick Casario in New England, he resisted overtures as well. He landed in Houston. George Payton wanted the right opportunity, and he wouldn't even take interviews. Last year, he pulled himself out of the Browns GM search for a reason. He was okay working behind Rick Spielman in Minnesota. But now, in this offseason, after the most unique NFL season we've ever seen, with the Broncos being yet another non playoffless campaign, George Payton decides. He looks at the, the roster. He looks at the opportunity. He comes to Denver yesterday towards the facility and goes, I'm in. Sign me up. It just shows you they are not as wayward, the Broncos, as the national media would have you believe. They are not too far removed from being right back into relevancy like we saw a half decade ago. I got to admit, you know, as I was writing up the article this morning, when we learned that following his meeting and in, in his second interview and tour of the facility, and then also going out to grab a bite. We learned this way after he'd been hired, but going out to Elway's steakhouse to get a bite with uh, Elway and Vic, you know, we learned that he then on Tuesday hopped on a plane, went back home. And so I'm trying to read that, you know, I'm like, well, how do you interpret that? But it turns out the deal was done. They knew then and there, in fact, when George Payton and John Elway and, Uh, Vic Fangio left UC Health Training Center to mosey on over to Elway's to get some, some, uh, you know, hunk of beef in him, so to speak. Joe Ellis stayed back to get to work on the contract, on the deets, because the offer had been made. The deal was done. Now it was just time to consummate. So Peyton hopped on a plane saying, all right, guys, sounds good. Get the paperwork over. I'm going to go home, pack a bag, get things ready so I can be back here Saturday to, to, to start the job. I thought it was funny, though. Cliss put out the menu that everyone had. It was Elway steak, uh, you know, uh, uh, Patrick Smythe steak, uh, George Payton steak, and then Vic Fangio hamburger. I, they go to Elway's and Cherry Creek gets a hamburger. Um, they got the deal done, though, Chad. And it's ironic that the Broncos are replacing Elway, and he's bowing out of the limelight, and he's giving full autonomy over. But where do they go to close the deal for Elway's replacement? Elway's restaurant. The, the incestuous Broncos circle is complete. Something about <laughs> there it is ground beef really speaks to Fangio's heart because we know how how much he has an affinity for meatballs, right? And pasta, he went with the burger. And as Cliss says here, you know, for a little testimonial. His son says Elway's the the burgers at Elway's are are legit, are the best. I bet. But yeah, Peyton steak, Elway steak, my steak, Fangio <laughs> burger. But see, cool little insights like this are are always fun and. Uh, give you just a little bit more context on the lay of the land. And guys, we have so much more to get to. We haven't even started on the chat. We haven't even, I see so many super chats locked, loaded, ready to go. We are going to get to that here in just a moment, but first we got to take care of some quick matters of business, starting with the sponsor of tonight's live stream pod sports betting.com right now. Gang gambling is legal in the state of Colorado. And if you're looking to make watching your favorite sports, just a little bit more interesting Sportsbetting.com is your no-brainer destination because you get sharp odds, low juice, uh, have their own in-house bookmakers, which means they're not relying on third parties for odds. That results in, for you, reduced juices, uh, reduced juice, that is, uh, best prices, hassle-free bonuses, which you get to roll over after using it one time as opposed to some of the other sites out there making you have to bet it five to 30 times before you can access that coin. And then 24-7 live customer support, always a real person, in the U.S. of A. But the kicker is this. Right now, gang, after you make your first deposit, sportsbetting.com will match it up to 750 bucks. So let's say you put in 500 bucks, They'll match that all the way up to $500. let us say you put in $749, $750. they will match it. You go above that, you know, the, the, the farthest they'll go is $750. But that is legit money. That's free money sitting on the table for you to use. Plus, right now you got the NBA. It's in full swing, and you'll also get a $25 bet credit for NBA better. So head on over right now to sportsbetting.com slash milehighhuddle. That's sportsbetting.com slash milehighhuddle. 
and capitalize on up to 750 bucks in free bet credits and start this year off on the right foot, gang. All right, a couple other quick things here, and we'll dive right back in. Uh, make sure you are following the pod on Twitter, at Huddle Up Pod, the main account, at Mile High Huddle. Also, my partner, Zach Kelberman, at Kelberman NFL, myself, at Chad N. Jensen, and the producer, John K., who is back in the saddle. He's back from vacation, at John K., MHH. That's how you can connect with us on Twitter. Also, gentle reminder to head on over to uh, the merch store. Where's the link? I lost the link. That's weird. It got reorganized or reappropriated. I don't know where it went. Here it is. Head on over to huddleuppod.com and get yo swag on. Get a hat, get a t-shirt, get a face mask, mugs, hoodie, little something for everybody. It's another way, gang, to support what we're doing here at MHH and also help us, you know, rep the brand. Also, you want to get access to this week's Kelberman, uh, Kelberman's Corner, which is going to be Sunday at noon with Zach and Kim hosting. I don't know yet what that hot take is going to be. Zach's cooking it up right now. He's It's percolating in his mind, but you know it's going to hold water. It might be a hot take, but it's going to hold water. You don't want to miss that. The way you get access is, is head to our page on Facebook. Just go facebook.com slash milehighhuddle. There's a big blue button that says become a supporter. You click that. You're in like Flynn. You'll have access to that. And right now, those of you watching on Facebook, at the very bottom of your screen where you would type in your chat, type in your question, type in your, type in your comment, there's a green icon. If you click that icon, it'll take you through the entire process of signing up. We appreciate you, uh, your consideration on that. And we welcome all of our new supporters who have flocked and flooded over there since we debuted Kelberman's Corner. And we just are so excited to have you guys and are looking forward to what 2021 brings. And if you can't do those things, gang, if you can't become a supporter or buy a T-shirt or become a super chat superstar, it's all good. We seriously are just stoked to have you in the stream. We do ask, number one, though, that you subscribe. That's on especially crucial on YouTube, Apple, wherever you listen after the fact on demand. Number two, that you like this video, key on Facebook, key on YouTube. And then the last thing, number three, is the litmus test. If we are doing a good job for you, share these episodes out there, even if it's not the YouTube link or the Facebook link. Retweet it on Twitter. You know, when, you, when you're listening to the episode after the fact on Apple or CastBox or iHeart, share that link out there. Help us continue to grow and reach new like-minded Broncos fans just like you because the time is now. We're, we're going to awaken that sleeping giant, and this 21, uh, 2021 season is going to be a gas. This is the Overtime Podcast Network. Zach, let's grab this super chat from W.E. Appreciate you, W.E. He says, uh, great news today. I have a feeling Peyton will go all in on Stafford or Deshaun Watson. They did dump Keenum for Cousins. Zach, I know you had a story yesterday um, that kind of was on this subject. Mike Kliss, who is as plugged in as anybody when it comes to the to machinations at Dove Valley with the with the shot callers, he seems to be of a mind that he's going to at least explore going after a top-tier QB. Well, I mean, he was just it, – it was a suggestion on Kliss's part based on uh, Peyton's and the Vikings' acquisitional history with their quarterbacks. And I understand the dot connecting, but again, would Peyton's first move as the Broncos GM be to that – to give up – what three, four, five first round picks for Watson take on his contract. It, it's just not very feasible. I can definitely see him bringing in a veteran quarterback to either usurp Drew Locke or compete with Drew Locke. It, it's not going to be Deshaun Watson. Might not even be Matt Stafford. Uh, I do think by his history though, he's only drafted under his watch in the, in the, in the Broncos and the Vikings front office. They've drafted two first round quarterbacks, two. Christian Ponder and Teddy Bridgewater. But failing that, Chad, beyond last year, they used a seventh round pick on uh, Stanley, the quarterback. They didn't, they went multiple drafts in a row. I think it was seven straight without taking a quarterback. So that would lead me to believe if Cliss connects dots, I can too. They're not going to draft one if they bring a QB in. It's, it's going to go the veteran route under George Payton. <laughs> In the case of Christian Ponder, I want to say he was like a top 15 pick, like 12 or 13. I know Teddy Bridgewater, he was toward the tail end of round one. If I remember it right, Zach, the Vikings traded up to get back into the first round. I might be misremembering that, but I I think it was like 32 or 31. Yes, he was barely a first rounder. But but yeah, I think, you know, you you look at Peyton's history working hand in glove with Rick Spielman, the the GM there uh, in Minnesota, and they have been a part, he has been, I should say, Peyton, a part of some pretty big power moves on the quarterback front. I mean, they 
landed, recruited, signed Brett Favre, got his last you know quality season as an NFL Hall of Fame quarterback in 2009, got all the way to the NFC title game, <clears throat> which they returned to you know uh, almost a decade later with Case Keenum. But if it's not for maybe the bounty gate and all, everything that took place with the Saints that year, who went on to win the Super Bowl, of course, maybe Brett Favre brings home one more ring and it's in the in the purple and gold. But then, as you mentioned, Kirk Cousins. I mean, look, when they signed Kirk Cousins, it was an unprecedented deal. Remember, it was three years north of $30 million and the entire contract was guaranteed. That was unprecedented, Zach, at the time. He was also a free agent. I mean, they didn't have to give up draft picks to acquire him. So, again, I, I can see George Payton going the veteran route, but to suggest Deshaun Watson or even Dak Prescott, I mean, he's not going to come into the Broncos front office, and when you have Von Miller up in the air, Simmons unresolved, Shelby Harris unresolved, he's not going to pay Dak Prescott $40 million. There has to be some understanding as to why Payton got the job that either Ellis or Elway or Fangio said, listen, Locke is going to be a part of the equation. He may, may not be the starter when it's all said and done, going into the season, but he's going to be on the roster. You have to decide whether he's the quarterback of the future for this season or you want to bring someone in, but it has to be realistic. They can't shell out millions in cap, in cap space or multiple first-round picks for someone like Deshaun Watson. Uh, a, a, a super chat from WE that was so early in the chat that it jumped way ahead. We're going to grab it here. Appreciate you, my friend. He says, <clears throat> excuse me, he says, uh, give me Trey Lance or Justin Fields over Zach Wilson. Wilson is a one-year wonder with an injury background. Lance Fields have more tools, traits. Zach, that's a concern of mine as well, especially when you consider that, I mean, I guess you could you could look at Joe Burrow as a one-year wonder, but he was at least a two-year starter. The last one-year wonder that really makes me a little frightened of, of Wilson, not because they're necessarily similar players, although there are some similarities to them as prospects, but because of that one-year wonder thing was Mitchell Trubisky to the, in the Chicago Bears when he was drafted af, out of uh, UNC in 2017. So, you know, <clears throat> Wilson, <clears throat> excuse me, on the surface is the quarterback I would like the most of those three. But I'm going to do a lot more investigation between now and April on both Trey Lance and Justin Fields. I'm, I'm mostly off on the idea of, of taking Justin Fields. And I know guys uh, like Dylan, they're going to say, hey, you know, scout the player, not the school. I'm afraid of Ohio State quarterbacks. I'm just telling you the truth. But nevertheless, what's your reply here to WE? Well, I know that uh, uh, Fields was hurt in the uh, the bowl game, but he really didn't impress me. And whatever stock that or goodwill he built up kind of dissipated in that game. To me, I, I mean, it's all subjective. This is the whole point of the pre-draft process. Every grade, uh, you know, ranks every every team grades the quarterbacks differently I have Zach Wilson as my quarterback too and I happen to think there's not much of a gap between Trevor Lawrence and Zach Wilson it all it all depends on the right coaching staff though the right system these quarterbacks go to with the right guy in place you can make Fields or Lance or Wilson whoever a productive if not starting if not all pro potential quarterback you have to ask yourself do the Broncos have that in place? No matter the quarterback they would take, you know, hypothetically in that spot, whether it's any of the big four, is Pat Shermer the guy to unlock these these highly talented prospects? If he can't do it with Locke, I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see. And in that same statement, <clears throat> uh, Peyton also talks about an exceptional coaching staff that he is inheriting. So he's signaling, yeah. he's telegraphing that, Hey, I'm playing ball, at least this year, on the coaching staff. But you know something we didn't really talk about that was a, a thread here of um, you know a, a common thread for Peyton and landing the Broncos job is Pat Shermer as OC because, of course, Pat Shermer was the OC in Minnesota and, and the brainchild behind Case Keenum's uh, one-year wonder. So there's a little bit of a connection there, and you got to wonder <clears throat> if Peyton, with his experience seeing how Shermer coaches and seeing some of the success he's had with – quarterbacks over the years feels how that shapes I should say his view on Drew Locke because you know they didn't get an offseason they didn't get a real training camp they didn't get any preseason reps and all that maybe he sees Shermer and goes I feel a little bit more confident in rolling with Locke but as I tweeted today I still think even though you could say the 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 safest bet in terms of you know who's going to be the day one starter at quarterback for Denver what's up Christy I think it's it's Drew Locke, but it's still replete with danger. It's by far, you know, set and forget type situation. I think George Payton, just reading between the lines, what the insiders are saying, how the Broncos are signaling, he's going to turn over every stone 
and investigate every means possible with which to possibly upgrade the quarterback position. And if he ultimately turns over all those stones, Zach, and realizes that Drew's our best option this year, then Drew will be the guy. But he could turn over a stone, right, find a gem and go, that's our guy, whether it's free agency trade or the draft. Yeah, and, you know, because Peyton and the Broncos are stuck with Shermer for 21, it looks like, I mean, the incumbent coaches are remaining in place. It it seems like since Peyton has no loyalty to Drew Locke, he'll go to Shermer and be like, listen, what is your opinion on him? Can we win with him? Is he the guy? Tell me what I need to know about Drew Locke before I make my own determination and figure out the right course of move for the Broncos at the QB position. I don't think it's, you know, Peyton is so dead set on either – Shermer as the coordinator for the reason you laid out. This coaching staff, Chad, if they have a down season, they're going to be replaced next year. Payton's going to bring his own guys in from the top down. So he knows Shermer is just the holdover. He's the lame duck. He will get his input on Drew Locke. But if he has conviction, if he thinks Stafford, let's say, can upgrade that spot, he'll trade for Stafford. If he likes Zach Wilson at nine, he'll get Zach Wilson. And the good thing is now we have a guy in the front office who's bona fide. It's not hypothetical. He, he's not hits or misses. This is a guy who has one of the best eyes for talent in the entire NFL. So if he thinks Locke is the guy, it's worth listening to. If he thinks Locke is not the guy, it's worth considering. This is the Overtime Podcast Network. By the way, Tanner, thank you for that very, very generous uh, super chat, my friend. We really appreciate you. That just is phenomenal. You should uh, reach out to us, shoot us an email, uh, milehighhuddle at gmail.com. And, uh, you know, you've, you've been coming on strong the last uh, month or so. So, hey, man, we'd love to send you a little thank you. We really appreciate that, brother. He says, hi, guys. I have zero chance in a day to talk Broncos because I live in Rhode Island. So these pods are key. Awesome, dude. Cool to hear that. He says, I hope Peyton keeps the cap hit low when re-signing our free agents. Denver needs to hit on some free agents. And there's a chance to land both inside linebackers, Levante David and KJ Wright. I'm interested in Levante, even though he's he's a little long in the tooth for what it's worth. But, <clears throat> but yeah, that's cool. I mean, Broncos country is not a geographic location. It's a state of being. It's wherever you are. And Tanner, you are in the uh, the home state of Charlie Bailey Gates, right? From uh, me, myself, and Irene, the, the, <laughs> the uh, patrolman, the motorcycle patrolman, Jim Carrey. That's what I think of. Sorry, my friend. When I hear Rhode Island, I think of that movie. Love you. Appreciate you. What's your thoughts here on uh, on Tanner? I think of Whitey when I think of that movie. That character yeah. was just great. It's a great movie. Um, in terms of the cap hit, here's the thing. You know, right now they have about twenty million to roll over into twenty twenty one, and we know the cap is going to be stagnant, if not lowered, because of the pandemic. But they can make at least three moves that we've talked about, Chat, to free up thirty six million dollars in ca- salary cap space. Jarrell Casey, Kareem Jackson, and AJ Boye. You cut all three players. Little dead money and about forty million dollars in savings, so they can dole that out to Simmons, to Harris, to whoever else. In terms of the inside linebackers, I really I'd be okay with David, but I prefer the Broncos restock the cupboard like Peyton loves to do through the draft. Not really overspending on someone's leftovers. A guy who is kind of entering the twilight of his career. We've had that guy. We had it in Davis. We had it in Brandon Marshall. I want the young guy in the draft, whether it's Micah Parsons, David Collins, whoever. So would I be okay if they went the, the veteran route for one guy? Sure. But for both KJ Wright and Levante David to have both dinosaurs back there, not named Alexander Johnson, I don't know about that. I didn't realize that the observation never struck me until I saw some of the comments here in the chat. George, where's the eyebrows? That's a good point. See, they're with, they're with Juwan, Juwan James. He has them. I know. What's up, dude? <laughs> uh, I was kind of hoping Chad and Zach would shave their eyebrows to get the George Payton signing <laughs> spirit. Uh, hey, Tune man. in tomorrow. Show us the love, and maybe uh, maybe we'll do just that. But, yeah, interesting. I wonder what it is. I think he does have eyebrows. It's just his eyebrows are – because what is it called? Alopecia, I want to say, that Juwan James has where he just doesn't grow hair, period. Obviously, in George's case, he's got a nice – you know, solid head of hair on him. But I think his eyebrows, Zach, might just be uh, like, you know, blonde colored or something. So it disappears into the into the complexion. I don't know. Maybe he was in a frat. They got shaved off or something. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> Levi, good to see you, my brother. Bonafide superstar. He says, hey, fellas, hope you are well excited for this offseason. Yes, indeed. Yes. We're doing great, my brother. And it's going to be a very – I mean, as soon as John Elway, thank you for the for the stars, Marcus. As soon as John Elway uh, relinquished, that's the word. I'll just I'll use that. 
the GM duties, we knew this was going to be a tumultuous offseason. Now, I think both Zach and I are, are high on the prospect of that tumult is going to result in some, you know, some dividends for the team. David, thank you for the stars. But uh, it remains to be seen. What are you going to do about Vaughn? What are you going to do about the quarterback? What are you going to do about Simmons? What are you going to do about Philip Lindsay? The more people I've talked to just over the last week and a half since the season ended, the more I'm starting to doubt if Philip Lindsay still has a place with this team in 2021 and beyond. So, so many decisions that have to be made here. And it's going to be really interesting because even though we can look at, at Peyton's resume with the Vikings and that can kind of help, you know, inform some of what we might project that he'll do. This is a new ingredient. This is a new set of eyes, a new perspective. And, Really, all bets are off. Well, something that just came to me in terms of maybe Philip Lindsay's future is look at the the history. If we want to, that's the only thing we can go on right now is the history with the Vikings. But they drafted Dalvin Cook, and even though they had him, who they resigned to an extension, by the way, they believe in locking their own players down. They went out and signed Latavius Murray. So at least the mindset in Minnesota was having multiple running backs and committing to them. I think that's actually a good sign for Philip Lindsay's future and Melvin Gordon's future in Denver. In terms of being excited, I was already excited because that's every offseason. Every team is 0-0 again at this point right now, the non-playoff teams. There's a lot of hope and anticipation and rumors going on. I wouldn't have been as excited, though, if they would have hired Sham Kelly. I wouldn't know. I don't think he was qualified enough. I don't think he stacks up anywhere near George Payton or Terry Fontenot. So I am ecstatic. The Broncos, not only, again, they didn't just walk up and do the Babe Ruth and and hit a home run. It was bases loaded, bottom of the ninth, Chad, 3-2 count, smacked out of the park. This, to me, again, in my time covering Denver since 2016, the best day for the Broncos franchise. Oscar, good to see you, my friend. Appreciate the super. He says, the Peyton era has officially begun. Time to get relevant again. That's right, man. We got to awaken that sleeping giant. Now. Appreciate you, my friend. It's good to see you, Marcus. Uh, he said he's one of our Facebook supporters, gives stars. I've seen him jump over and do a super chat. This is a guy that exemplifies the hashtag state of being as well, for what it's worth. He's across the pond in the United Kingdom. So appreciate you, Marcus. You're up late, by the way, dude. When do you sleep? He says, what will happen to Von Miller under the new GM? I'll tell you right now, the first thing that's going to happen, Zach, once uh, George Payton gets to town, you know, settles in, hires his his Matt Russell, his director of player personnel, and interviews all the scouts, which, by the way, George Payton has a nephew who is a scout. Is it Rob Payton, I want to say, who is a scout today for the Denver Broncos? So that was another little connection that I wasn't made. I didn't realize I was going through the uh, media, um, you know, the media handbook or whatever it is, the, the media release we get before each and every season. True, he has a nephew on this staff already. So he'll go through the, the interviews, see who he's going to keep, including Brian Stark. I imagine he keeps most everybody. But then the next question, Zach, has got to be, what do you do about Vaughn? Because this is the, the contract year, uh, not contract year, um, option year for Vaughn. In other words, even though he's under contract, it's a team option. So the Broncos have the prerogative to decline the option, which would then render him an unrestricted free agent. Everything we've heard on the subject, including from Mike Kliss, who spoke to this specifically, George Payton is going to ask Vaughn Miller to restructure. And how that shakes out, Zach, it could be simply we want you back in 2021, but at a lesser you know, cost, or here's an extension that you know lowers your cap hit this year but keeps you around for another two or three years, give you a chance to retire as a Bronco. That's the direction this thing is heading, as much as fans aren't going to want to hear that. I think I'm a little more optimistic about the situation. I had someone ask me, or multiple people ask me on Twitter, what's going to happen with Vaughn, with Peyton? And I really truthfully think that a new GM in his first offseason would not unload a a franchise legend and a future Hall of Famer in Vaughn Miller. They will find some sort of olive branch, whether it's a reduced contract, whether they convert some of his uh, base salary into a signing bonus, whatever they want to do to acquiesce not just him but also the salary cap I think they will do that it would send a good message to the locker room they're keeping a franchise legend in tow it would look so good for George Payton Chad remember the acrimony when Vaughn was negotiating with Elway about his contract cropping him out of Instagram pictures and all the different you know chatter all the different rumors well Payton come in in his first offseason replacing Elway and kind of put that acrimony to bed he can find a common ground for Vaughn and the team, not only to send a message, but also keep the Broncos competitive. 
Because Vaughn's going to come back healthy next season, and it's still Vaughn Miller. You're better with him than without him. So maybe I'm just a little too, you know, homeristic on this issue. I don't think Vaughn's going anywhere this season. I wish I agreed with you on this case. I really I disagree. Not to say that I'm predicting he leaves, but I think George Payton is probably going to end up taking a much more non-emotional approach with Vaughn, and <clears throat> he's going to make an effort to keep him. They're going to try and talk him into staying. But Vaughn's got to be willing to take, you know, a little bit of a step back. And honestly, if you're Vaughn Miller, by the way, Mark says here, we didn't get Peyton, but we got Peyton, right? Just mind the spelling there. Good to see you, by the way, bro. Um, You know, Vaughn Miller, if you look at it from his perspective, I understand that he was not exactly amenable to talking about the idea of changing his contract at any point when he was asked about it during the 2020 season. But if you look at it, hey, man, not only did the Broncos draft you in the first round, made a lot of money on your rookie deal. Then after bringing home the bacon for him, bringing home that third Lombardi, they made you the highest paid defensive player in NFL history at the time. Right. That has since changed. But nevertheless, they showed the dedication, support. You know, they bent around you. Right. They did what you wanted to do. And now how can you really fault them for wanting to come to the table and say, hey, we got to do something different this time? Because let me just recount this and then I'll grab JT and then serve this over to you. You got the fact that, excuse me, even according to Vaughn's own standards. okay, this is from Vaughn. We've heard it in the past. 2019, he made the Pro Bowl, but it was a nominal Pro Bowl, right? Like even he's probably like, Pro Bowl? All right, I'll take that. But Eight sacks, not up to his typical standards, and he only missed one game, right? He had he missed one game that year with a knee, and it was down the stretch. Then he comes back and uh, suffers that injury on the doorstep of the season that costs him all of 2020, all right? Meanwhile, the teeth are getting longer, right? He's getting older. 2021 uh, 20, uh, is going to be his age 32 season. And then the last little wrinkle here is that Bradley Chubb, you're going to have to reckon with him in the near, and he just earned a Pro Bowl himself. So these are all the factors that George Payton, I think, is probably going to end up weighing in a very unemotional kind of just black and white way in terms of business. Now, JT, and then I'm serving this over to you. Appreciate you, my friend. Another across the pond stud in our superstar community. He says, hi, guys. Glad I can catch live. Love the hire, but Payton is going to be busy. Vaughn, Simmons, QB, in-house personnel, all need sorting. Love the aggression, but calm approach. A new era. Zach, your thoughts to, to the to what I just went over, and JT. I, I agree with you. It needs to be non-emotional, and Peyton has no emotional ties to anyone on the roster, including Vaughn, including Drew Locke, including anybody else. I, I just, again, I think the Broncos are much better with a healthy Vaughn than without a hel- and then without Vaughn at all, and uh, he's coming back healthy next season. Will they ask him to take a pay cut? Yeah, I just think that Peyton is going to make it more approachable. And you know what, Chad? If Elway's going to be some sort of an advisor of this season on, on a loose level, let him advise him on Peyton, on Von Miller then. Let him do some of his new job and, and say, listen, is he worth paying? I think he is. He's going to bring a lot to the organization. Elway was talking up Vaughn going into the season when he was fully healthy, and so was Vic Fangio. And he's not exactly 38, 39 years old. Vaughn still has some gas left in that tank. And I think for next season, Peyton wants to make them a contender, which I think they can be in year one under his leadership Why not have Vaughn out there on defense with him? This is the Overtime Podcast Network. I agree in a perfect world. And make no mistake, I wasn't necessarily, what I was saying there wasn't necessarily me advocating for, you know, Vaughn Miller to completely throw all of his ambition or what's best for him to the wind and just submit to whatever the will of George Payton is. I'm just saying I think these are kind of how the, you know, it's kind of the lay of the land, and uh, you just need a fresh a fresh set of eyes on this. And honestly, it might sound crazy, and I'm not even – again, this is just – this is kind of rhetorical, something to, to ponder. It might be in the Broncos' best interest, short and long term, to not pay Von Miller $18 million this year, even if it comes at the expense of him not being on the field. I'm saying that's a possibility, all right? I'm not advocating that or saying that, you know, the, the Broncos should move on from Vaughn. Uh, Burn the guitarist. Good to see you, bro. He says, hey, guys, not saying that I don't like Peyton, but I find it funny that after all the, quote, youth and diversity in the front office, unquote, talk, they go hire the old white guy. Yeah, that ended up kind of falling flat in terms of, you know, um, the talking points from Joe Ellis in particular. But, Zach, what we're hearing 
is that basically it'd be an upset if the Matt Russell role, the director of player personnel, isn't a d- diverse hire. I, I just, you know, I sigh because, I, you know, maybe the question wasn't making it about race, but it, it's not about race. George Payton was the most qualified candidate among the three. Nothing to do with skin color. It has to do with merit. And Ellis didn't commit to hiring a black person for the job. He said we have to be better in that department. It doesn't have to be the GM. It can be Champ Kelly in a, in a personnel role. It can be another guy. It's not about race. It's not about black and white. Kelly, or excuse me, George Payton was the best option among the three. It's based on merit as it should be. In terms of, you know, qualifications, George Payton, as, as Zach said, was the most qualified candidate. And this is coming from two guys that – we like Peyton. I mean, as we told you, I think when we last spoke with you on Monday, neither one of us were going to be shedding any tears if the hire ultimately became George Peyton. We were pining for Terry Fontenot, all right, ultimately, but right. George Who's Peyton is black. <laughs> he was black. Um, but George Peyton is the guy they see with the most uh, experience and whatever his vision is for carrying the team forward, that's the one that resonated. And one thing we know too, Zach, is that Vic Fangio wanted, of all the candidates they talked to, Peyton was Fangio's guy. Peyton was the guy Fangio wanted for whatever that's worth. Here's Dave from Georgia jumping in. Good to see you, brother. He says, he has scouted and drafted or signed multiple Pro Bowl players. I'm good with this hire. Zach, as, uh, as you respond, I'm going to pull up a, a list here. This is from uh, the Denver Broncos, a nice little um, – a nice little. it's not a press release, but a little story here. 22 Pro Bowlers that he helped acquire in Minnesota – through the draft, free agency, and trades. Yeah, and division titles and and uh, winning records. I mean, it's consistent success. and It's something I've wanted the Broncos to be under Elway's leadership, not to be good one season and bad one season, to be inconsistent. You know, for lack of a better analogy, I don't want a Drew Locke in the front office. I don't want that ups and down, topsy-turvy. I want consistency. And one thing about Minnesota, they might not be world champions every year, but they've been consistently good. They've been a playoff team, if not a division champion, if not a winning record. And I think for the last five years, beggars can't be choosers, Chad. The Broncos have not been relevant since they won the title. It's over a half decade now. So it's baby steps. It's a winning record, then it's a playoff berth, and then maybe division. You go from there with Kansas City in the division, but it's baby steps. And that's what I think drew the Broncos to L- to uh, George Payton over someone like Champ Kelly. Not only is he experienced, he comes from an organization, maybe unlike Chicago, that's been consistently good the last decade. Yes, indeed. And the one thing that kind of – the one curious commonality that if you look at his resume, or let's just say – Broncos, Vikings, both at times seemed to be over the last five years. Really, the only thing they were missing was the quarterback. And the Broncos, you know, they've gone every which way to try and find their guy. And the Vikings, you know, they've gone a bunch of different ways, too. They gave up a first round pick to get Sam Bradford. Didn't really pan out, but mostly that didn't work out because he his injuries. Case Keenum, they saw that for us for the trees and opted not to pursue him any way, shape, or form. John Elway cleaned that up for him. And then they they pay, you know, a King's ransom to sign Kirk Cousins, but it never came out in the wash in terms of, you know, getting him over the hump like they hoped. It's a it's a little bit of an alarming commonality that the two sides share in terms of where George Payton came from and where he's arriving. But at least I think the takeaway there for me would be Payton realizes that, you know, all the Von Millers in the world, all the Justin Simmons in the world won't get you to the promised land if you don't have the quarterback. And then here's Fat Cats. Appreciate you, bro. He says, we now have our GM. Is there any truth we could still see Champ Kelly be hired as Peyton's number two guy? I know that this was a theory, Zach, that Mike Kliss floated on Denver radio on Tuesday. I, he kind of hinted around it a little bit today. Your thoughts? It definitely could be, and I think that would be a nice get for the Broncos uh, front office and scouting department. It would do more, I think, for the player, uh, you know, the intangibles, the personality, the locker room, to the player management and development. I think that's what Champ Kelly's strong suit is. I Because you compare him to, and nothing again, nothing to do with skin color, you compare his resume to someone like to Terry Fontenot or George Payton, and it's just no comparison. Some guys like Matt Russell, are better at being number twos. And that's what, for now, Champ Kelly is. Nothing to do with anything else but his resume and experience or lack thereof. And in the case of Champ Kelly, 
I mean, and also Brian Stark, just getting an interview, just being word getting around in the league that you were considered for a GM opening, that's juice. That gives you some cachet. That yeah. gives you some clout. And in the case of Champ Kelly, it would not surprise me if he were to end up here as the number two for George Payton and, you know, it would be a step up for him. He's currently an assistant personnel guy in Chicago. So it would be a step up the ladder. It would be a promotion, not only in title, but we would assume, of course, in pay as well. Uh, Mohammed Badri jumping in. Good to see you, brother. The MHH male model in the house. He says, do you think keeping Drew Locke as the starting quarterback was a factor in this hire? So in other words, was that, you know, a bargaining chip or a, a, an exception that the new GM, Zach, had to be willing to make to get this job? I don't think so. No. But what are your thoughts? I think keeping Locke on the roster was a discussion they had, not necessarily the starter, because they can't, you know, they're already forcing a, a head coach and a coaching staff on Peyton in year one. They can't force the quarterback as well. Nothing is locked in place, pun intended, uh, for Drew in the quarterback situation next season. I think Elway and Ellis and Fangio said to him, listen, Drew is going to be, if not the starter, then at least in the competition to be the starter. What you want to do as a GM is on you, whether you want to draft a guy, sign a guy, trade for a guy, whatever. But Drew is going to be part of the team. He's going to be on the roster. I think that's the conversation they had, Chad. We got Jeff C. in the house, longtime listener, longtime superstar. Good to have you, my friend. He says, any concerns that the Vikings never made it over the hump? I'm optimistic. Just want your take on that Uh, real fact. The quarterback spot will be interesting. So, yeah, that kind of echoes and touches on, Jeff, what I was saying just a few minutes ago, which, Zach, uh, we never really got a chance to hear your your, uh, reply to that. Just the notion that the commonality of having a really – talented roster and deep roster at times. I mean, even you look at the Broncos 2016 and 2017 included, that was still a very deep and talented team. They just lacked the quarterback, which is similar to some of the, you know, some of the vagaries that the Vikings have have had to wrestle with over the last few years as well, because even though you showed Kirk Cousins the money, it hasn't come out in the wash. I do think if I'm correct me if I'm wrong, they got to the playoffs last year or the first year right with cousins but the last two years they haven't am i misremembering that did they get to the playoffs last year as a wild card i'll, I'll google it I, I don't know but look here i'll pose a counter question did the saints get over the hump recently did the bears get over the hump recently and everyone wanted if not george payton they wanted champ kelly or terry font me included i want in font to know but you can't really judge um a candidate based on what the entire team did that extends to players and personnel and coaches and the real GM. So I'm not holding that against uh, George Payton. I look at his quality of work. I look at what he was signed to do in Minnesota and that scout players and acquire players. You look at their draft class, you look at their record, you look at the pro bowlers and you look at the success again, consistent success. Not good one year, bad one year, good one year, bad one year. They've been a consistently good team, no matter who's under center, who's the coach. That's what I judge the candidate on, Chad. So it has to work both ways as well. You want to kill Peyton for how bad the Vikings have done, but what about the – when's the last time the Saints won a title? When's the last time the Bears won a title? It, it all – you know, it has to be fair. If it's if it's good for the goose, it's good for the gander, right? And so that's a very valid point. I mean, it's not – I'm not – we're not saying, Jeff, that it's not a valid red flag or something to wonder about and ponder. We'll see. We'll see it whether or not he can resolve that issue because, you know, that's the that's the mission statement for every team in the league. If you don't have a quarterback, if you don't have a franchise guy proven, there is no doubt, then you're wanting. You know, you're one of you got to do whatever you can to find that guy. And so we'll see how Peyton views that in the in the near future. But for what it's worth. Kirk Cousins arrived in Minnesota in 2018, right? Same free agent cycle that Keenum arrived in Denver. They missed the playoffs, the Vikings that year. Made the playoffs last year, 2019. You were right on that, Zach. And then they missed it again this year. So they went out and paid big coin to Kirk Cousins. Have made the playoffs one out of three years. Here's Crudum. Good to see you, my brother. And he's becoming a he's becoming a superstar. Keep at it, my friend. We love seeing you. We appreciate the support. It means a lot to us, keeps the content flowing too. So thank you. He says, I'm loving the GM hire. I like what he said about building around the draft and also about being aggressive, but not reckless. I think Drew deserves another year. So the top priority in the draft, defense. 
your thoughts, Zach? Well, I mean, to your last point as well, anyone who watched Minnesota this season, Kirk Cousins was not the problem, guys. I, I mean, he threw for 4,265 yards, 35 touchdowns, and 13 picks under Gary Kubiak. And he had two great receivers. Uh, he had a good running back, but Kirk was Kirk was not the problem in Minnesota, so I'm not faulting them too much on that. Um I, I think defense has to. I mean, you look at maybe offense, what position would you take in round one? Realistically, I got a question about Devontae Smith. It's not going to happen, but maybe a quarterback? I just don't see it, even with George Payton in tow. It's got to be, to me, a cornerback or an inside linebacker. It has to. Here's the quote that Critham is, is uh, referencing there from Payton's statement. Quote, I believe in hard work, the grind, and not taking any shortcuts to achieve our goals. Drafting and developing players is the number one priority. We will be aggressive, but not reckless, in adding talent to our roster. So love it. kind of an interesting choice of words there, but I love it. He's signaling that, look, because it is about the draft. You know, there is no such thing. They learned that kind of the hard way, and I don't mean to push back too much on you on uh, the Kirk Cousins thing. I never wanted Kirk Cousins in Denver. In fact, you and I, when uh, we teamed up to start podcasting together, when we joined forces, it was right after that hiring cycle. You and I teamed up somewhere around, I want to say, April of, of 17. So that had already kind of been in the books by two or three months. Keenum was the guy, et cetera, et cetera. Kirk Cousins, you know, he's, he's the, 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 the only exception that proves the rule. And this is a, a phrase I'll give credit to uh, Mike Pritchard, former number one pick, from CU, play for the Falcons, play for the Broncos, used to do Denver radio. Now he's back in Vegas. But this is his the term he coined that I heard at least first from him. There is no such thing as a free agent franchise quarterback because those guys just don't hit the market. The only exception, and this is what proves the rule, was Peyton Manning. Exactly. And he was be he was a free agent and not a, a guy under a contract you have to give up draft picks for. I love this quote so much because it's the right way to go in the NFL. If you want to build a consistent, uh, successful championship caliber roster, it's what the Chiefs have done. It's what the Packers have done. Build it from the ground up. You're supposed to use the signing period to add a little sprinkles on top, the cherries on top, but the actual ice cream, the foundation chat is the draft, is your rookie players. And that quote, aggressive but not reckless, we can remove the Broncos right now then from the Deshaun Watson sweepstakes. That signals everything right there. Not going to happen, guys. Well said. Uh, BG in the house. Good to see you, my friend. Thank you for that very generous super chat, wow. my brother. Thank long you, Brian. Listener, long time superstar. MHH, Mount Rushmore superstar. Uh, BG says, guys, I'm kind of torn on what to hope for in this draft. I'm not sure if we should swing on drafting a quarterback or just go for a defensive back or a linebacker. And it's because if Locke doesn't pan out, then we are more years from being relevant again if we don't try for a quarterback. Thoughts? I mean, it's a fair uh, – those misgivings, I think, are, are fair. Um, but, you know, again, you've gone this far with Drew. You've put in the time. You've, you've put in the – you've gotten in the live bullet experience. And given a full off season, given all that with the second year, the first time he'll have had to, the same scheme, the same OC for two years in a row since his sophomore year, you know, I think you could relatively, maybe not safely, but you could feel confident that you could see an improvement in his play. And Zach, the last time Drew Locke had the same coordinator from one year to the next, that next year, he had a record breaking season. The year he broke the single season touchdown record for the SEC was the second year he had that OC it at Mizzou. So I get your misgivings, BG. And these are these are issues that the Broncos, Peyton, they're going to be wrestling with over the next three months. But uh, I think, honestly, the Peyton hire has, has still not changed my perspective on this, Zach. I think the Broncos' best bet, just looking at the lay of the land, looking at where they're at in the draft, looking at the availability in the draft quarterback wise and free agency and even the trade blusters, you know, the, the Staffords and the Matt Ryans and, you know, maybe the free agent possibilities potentially like the Dax, uh, the, the uh, Andy Dalton's in terms of feasibility and realistic, I don't see a better option out there well within the Broncos grasp than drew heading into year three under those conditions. I think the the best word to use there was feasibly and realistically. And 
You know, again, if if it's not going to be Locke, if you bring another quarterback in, it, I don't believe in drafting someone for the sake of drafting someone, quarterback or not. So if they bring in, let's say, a Wilson, realistically, do the Broncos have the right system in place, the coaching staff in place to harness and build up and unlock that potential? I don't happen to think that. And if they're going to keep the incumbent coordinator, why not keep the incumbent quarterback? It's a package deal. You're better along with Shermer and Locke because at least Shermer knows Locke. He's Locke looked better in the second half of the season. He looked good in the finale. You can build on that. There's a foundation there. And he is, you guys are going to you know, crucify me for saying this, though. He is more of a sure thing right now than someone like Zach Wilson is, who's unproven, obviously, at the NFL level. Hasn't taken one snap. Drew has won in this league. He's shown flashes of brilliance in this league. He's shown uh, development in the second half of the season. I'm with you. I haven't given up on Drew Locke. You can look at it realistically, look at Peyton's history and say, you know, it might acquire a quarterback, you might acquire a backup for Locke, but by no means to the Broncos, or should they just wash their hands of him because they have a new GM now. This is the Overtime Podcast Network. By the way, Jason, we appreciate those stars, my friend, on Facebook. That's the one, uh, you know, gripe that we have with the StreamYard service we use to stream to all these different destinations at one time. They do a great job of making sure all the YouTube uh, supers are in the stream. I mean, even though we've complained about the chat not being able to go all the way to the top and all the way to the bottom without losing what you get at the top. Uh, but I, the one complaint that I've emailed them about is why can't you also have a, a, a method to show the stars? Because we just showed J- Jason just got put on the board by John, but it just shows him in a blank chat thing and it doesn't show that. So we'll see. I haven't heard back from them yet, but hopefully they're working on it. The queen of MHH jumping in, top roping it. She's just, she's the best. Christy needs no introduction. She says, we have a GM. Uh, Heart, love, Peyton is good news for the future of the franchise. Thanks, my guys. I think, and thank you, Christy. We, we really appreciate that and share the sentiment. I think it is good news. Like, you know, the Broncos took a step forward today. You know, John Elway, I've heard some some things through the grapevine. He's tired. He's worn down. These five years of losing Zach, it just took a toll. And then you wonder, right, the speculation about when he caught the, the bug during the football season, 2020, and he had to step away from the front office for two weeks till he got back on his feet, that that sapped him of, of quite a bit of his, you know, vim and vigor, if you will. Yeah, and the thing about Peyton is he's considerably younger. I want to say he's 8 to 10 years younger than John Elway, and that's that's a significant margin in the NFL. You have someone, uh, new blood and a fresh vision, I wrote in my story today. I think that's, to, to harp on Christie's comment there, it's what Denver needed, Chad, in the front office. A new set of eyes, a new mindset, and someone that hasn't failed, and just give someone else a crack at the bat. And it's not just someone. They didn't take a chance on the the, Va- the Vance Josephs of GM candidates, you know, or like a Champ Kelly. This is a bona fide, revered, respected, lauded, well accomplished personnel expert. They have replacing Elway. They are in excellent hands, and today was a major turning point in a positive upward direction for the future of the franchise. Uh, Jesse Randolph jumping in. Appreciate that super chat, my friend. And Jesse, if you're on Twitter. I mean, this is a message to everybody listening, viewing right now, but especially to our superstars. If you're on Twitter, make sure you reach out, connect with us. And uh, even if you're already following us, we have to say this sometimes. Oftentimes, the the handles on YouTube and Twitter are different. We don't recognize you if it's different. So if you're already following us, make sure you reach out. Let us know, hey, this is me, and uh, we'll, we want to know who you are. Connect, follow back so we can shout you out after each show. But appreciate you, Jesse. He says, thanks for keeping me in the loop. Going to go back to the start, so I don't ask an already answered question. Thanks, guys. Hashtag, I still like luck. Same. Interesting. Yeah, I'm, I'm on board with that, as you were. Jay Ritchie, good to see you, brother. Appreciate you. Longtime listener, longtime superstar. Jay says, fellas, is Peyton's plan to have Locke as the man? Bring in Andy Dalton, Fitzpatrick, maybe a Philip Rivers for one year to be the security blanket. I think Locke is the future. I think that's the safest bet right now. All right. We'll see how things unfold. But the one thing you can rest assured of is Peyton is going to not only turn over every stone looking for any possible way to upgrade the quarterback position, but Zach, he's not going to roll into 2021 with the fail safe 
being Jeff Driscoll. Right. That ain't happening. Even if they choose, all right, we're going to go ahead and you know give Locke basically the, the leg up on 2021 one last time, they're going to give him competition. They're going to bring in a proven veteran if the answer is Locke, uh, and it could be one of those guys. You know, It really could. And it's someone that could not only kind of be a subconscious, um, put it this way, give Drew Locke a little bit of competition anxiety, all right? while also being a veteran and a a mentor of sorts that can also help him out and kind of allow him to find his way in year three and pop and be that pop guy in year three. So keep an eye on on Dalton. It wouldn't surprise me, Zach, if the Broncos' ultimate decision under Peyton is we're sticking with Drew for 2021. We're going to go sign, you know, Andy Dalton or whoever. And then, you know, if it doesn't work out, if if 2021 ultimately shakes out to be a – Five and eleven, six and ten, seven and nine season again. George Payton gets rid of the coaching staff, gets rid of the quarterback, and officially, you know, restarts the whole thing with it being his vision from from top to bottom. Yeah, obviously we have no idea what his thinking is until he at least meets the media sometime next week. Uh, the indications right now is that he was probably told you know, that lock is going to be on the roster, at least part of the plans. But remember the phrase that he used, his his philosophy, aggressive but not reckless. It means aggressive in getting better personnel, a better backup quarterback or potential starter at quarterback, but not recklessly. That's maybe Andy Dalton, but not Deshaun Watson. I'm right there with you. I don't really want Rivers. I don't really want Fitzpatrick. And you have to keep in mind, guys, these backups that might be backups or bridge guys, they're going to command probably what? 10, 12, 15 million dollars a season. You can't devote that chunk of cap space to a backup potential quarterback and you have ro- uh, holes throughout the rest of the roster. You have to pay other guys as well. Tricky situation, but those who are expecting a blockbuster trade, Watson or maybe even Matt Stafford, not under this GM. I don't see it. Mike, appreciate those stars, my friend, on Facebook. It, uh, it all adds up and is very, very helpful to us. Rock Chalk Broncos, who I now know to connect those two accounts. We had some some conversations on Twitter, I think even today, right? And now I know your handle on YouTube, so that's good. Appreciate you. Uh, it says, been a while since I've been able to watch live. 2020 was rough. The hire of George Payton has me optimistic for the Broncos going into 2021 and beyond. Yeah, 2020, I mean, it was a, it was a B, you know, it was a B word, right? It was just unbelievably um, – Just, I mean, all-time worst year potentially, at least in modern history. And then you look at the Broncos, you go from having all the hope and optimism and potential in the world to that coming crashing down around your ears when in a rapid succession that happens in less than two weeks of real time, you lose your best defensive player, Von Miller. Then you lose your best offensive player in Cortland Sutton. Then you lose your young quarterback. I mean, so that's why that's why Big Fangio got a pass. All right. If we're being real, he he went from seven and nine to five and eleven and survived. Only one reason why. All the injuries, they said, look, it's a mulligan. We think that there were enough there to justify that, you know, you deserve one last swing at the table, just so that we can, you know, see what you could really do with a at least a conventional year of injuries, Zach. Not like I mean, you right. can make an argument San Francisco had a worse uh curse with the injury bug this year. Who else? Maybe the Cowboys. Yeah, yeah, Dallas. But you know, it was it was just that type of year. So that's all in the rear, uh, in the in the rearview mirror. Thank you for the stars, Steve. Good to see you, bro. Um, and it's all about the future. It's all about moving forward. And the thing is, the Broncos. You know, whatever excuses you you can say or, or facts as the case may be, injuries or the pandemic, they still did not take the leap under another Elway pick quarterback under another Elway assembled Broncos roster. So for the fifth year in a row since they won the title, they're banging their heads against the wall, banging their heads against the wall, and they're not getting any different results. It's the definition of insanity, Chad, as it goes. And Elway decided after that, I'm going to maybe bow out. Maybe this is a sign. I fail with all these quarterbacks. I mean, you can name them. I fail with countless rosters. I fail with countless coaches now. Maybe it's me. I don't want the pressure anymore. I'm tired. Let someone else take over. There's better candidates out there. I have to believe they've had their eye on George Payton for a while now. And it's not just that Elway kind of seeding power over and it being a dawn of a new day in Broncos country. George Payton is the new Broncos GM. 
I, I wish Broncos fans understood the gravity, Chad, and the, and the enormity of the situation. Not only are they in good hands, they are in excellent hands for the long term. Amen. Crudum again, jumping in. Crudum or crudum? I'm not sure, but uh, appreciate you, my Thank friend. Thank you either way. Yeah. Yes, he says. Would you guys hit free agency for a running back and get an Aaron Jones, or draft a running back if Lindsey ends up departing? For me, it would be draft, just because the shelf life on on a uh, running back, you know, the the, the tire, the, the tread on the tires, it's very short lived. And as as much as I like Aaron Jones, you've got Melvin Gordon, so you can afford to kind of go. Uh, you know, let's let's go the developmental route, go upside over immediate payoff. Let me give you another scenario here because the Vikings have obviously, you know, uh, uh, numerous un- uh, unrestricted free agents about to hit the open market in a few months. Among them is Amir Abdullah, the running back, former Lions draft pick. I believe he played in Nebraska. One of the fastest yep. running backs I've ever seen uh, on tape. He's going to be uh, uh, undrafted, undrafted, a unrestricted free agent. Obviously, he can sign with Denver. As a third down running back, he can pass protect, he can catch, he can run. That is a monumental perspective upgrade on Royce Freeman. Low cost as well, Chad. Wouldn't have to give up a lot of guaranteed money, a multi-year deal. If you don't want to draft a guy, I think Abdullah could be an option for Peyton this offseason. Abdullah was a guy that um, when I covered the 2015 Senior Bowl, he was the guy, him and uh, uh, Williams, right, from uh, David uh, – David, not Williams. What's his name, dude? The, 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 the former um, – What uh, team? North, North Iowa. He went to the Cardinals, and now he's in Houston. What's his name? David. David Johnson. Johnson, thank you. Man, sometimes the brain farts here. David but, Williams. That was, the name. <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah that, was, that was our guy in the seventh round a couple years later. But uh, – but no, Dave. So Johnson and Abdullah, man, they were the talk of that whole week because they just popped. Anytime you you cast your eyes to what was happening on the practice field, they just popped. And and of course, Johnson went on to become a short lived star. I mean, his his stars kind of dimmed of late. And Abdullah, because of concussions, really flamed out in Detroit. Uh, Nunzi in the house. Good to see you, Robbie. He says, "What is Fangio's status going into twenty twenty one? Playoffs or bust?" Strange situation with the GM not getting to hire his staff. Maybe a Mike McDaniel in 2022, please? Yeah, that's a really good question, and I think the answer to that is yes. It's playoffs or bust for, for Fangio. So he's definitely under the gun this time around, Zach. Oh, yeah. like, you know, there were questions in terms of how worried was Fangio about his job security in 2021 or 2020. I don't think he ever really was because of the signals that were being sent to him from on high. I think this year he's well aware that if he does a win, and it's, I mean, eight and eight ain't going to cut it. Nine and seven, okay, if it landed you in the playoffs. Anything less, I think George Payton, he can't afford to be that patient anymore. You know, this is right. That would be, excuse me, year six of missing the playoffs in a row, which is, again, just going further and further into the, 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 the unprecedented territory for the Broncos as a franchise. I would happen to think it's playoffs or bust. I mean, maybe like a nine and seven record could save Fangio, but what's the excuse? They're they're not going to have a pandemic. You know, they're going to have a normal off season or something close to it. They're going to have preseason games. You have a great GM in the building now. You have talent on the roster, and you might at, at the worst you going into the season with your incumbent quarterback getting some continuity, or you get a better quarterback on the on the open market through the draft whatever there's no excuse for Fangio and his defensive prowess and I'll take that a step further if he opens the season I mentioned this on the other podcast a few days ago if he opens the season 0 and 4 1 and 5 like you mentioned Chad which you hit on perfectly the last two seasons it's been you know 0 and 5 0 and 4 starts 1 and 4 1 and 5 if that happens again no more Fangio he's gone yeah he's gone so Tanner again jumping in thank you my friend and by the way we've officially crossed the the one hour mark we don't leave any of our superstars out in the cold, but these remaining um, supers we get, Zach, we got a rapid fire. Tanner, thank you, bro. He says, follow up hot take. If we don't hit the inside linebacker well with Justin Sternod, uh, hit the inback. Hold on, let me start over. Follow up hot take. If we don't hit the inside linebacker well, Justin Sternod <clears throat> will steal a job this summer, and either Josie or, or Johnson will end up like Todd Davis. We need speed. Maybe, my friend. I know the Broncos' former regime had a really high hopes for Sternod, and I want to. I would assume that Fangio, you know, liked him a lot, as, along with Reggie Herring and you know that side of the ball. But uh, this—that's George Payton's decision now. 
And you know what? Not only does Peyton not have loyalty to the Broncos players, but especially not to fringe players who didn't play last year. And I don't know. I, I just don't see Sternod as being this future three down starting inside linebacker, a good piece to have, but it, it is George Payton's uh, team now. And he's going to do what he sees fit to upgrade the roster. And he, I think he knows, I mean, they've had decent linebackers in Minnesota. It's a speed game on defense. Now you have to have that three down guy to run with tight end. So um, that's my opinion. Real quick, John, <clears throat> I just jumped to about seven fifteen. Um, we need Joel, Kyle, Cody, Kenneth, Duke, Mark, Kyle again, Mundungus, BG, Mundungus, BG, Dario, Josh, and then I think I'm I'm current. So just FYI. Zyka, good to see you, my friend. I know you listen. It's been a while since we've seen you on Super Chat, so welcome back. We really appreciate that, brother. Appreciate you. He says, Locke is my QB. Peyton will mold Elway's piece. Maybe, my friend, and I honestly think that's what's in the best interest of the Broncos in terms of, you know, if you can avoid having to go out and spend another high-round premium pick on a quarterback and put that somewhere else because it meant that Drew Locke turned the corner and, you know, and and took you to – took a step forward and the team took a step forward, that's the ideal situation. You don't want to have to start over, but Peyton might roll in here and just say, again, he's going to turn over every stone and he might not come to that same conclusion as you, Zyka. Yeah, and you know what? As big as of a Locke fan as I am, if Peyton says Locke is not the guy, if Peyton thinks he can upgrade on him, then you know what? I'm trusting George Peyton to make the final call. Uh, we've got Kyle Heckman in the house. Good to see you, Kyle. He says, I understand we won't pay Vaughn $18 million. I understand Vaughn might not like to be paid less, but realistically, no one will pay that. So what do you think Denver would pay, and how much would other teams pay <clears throat> Excuse me. Thanks, as always, guys. <clears throat> Sorry, this frog in my throat. Uh, for what it's worth, I think Vaughn Miller could still go, go out there on the open market and command pretty dang close to that, even if it's a short-term one- or two-year deal. I really do, because the market's just changed. Like The reason the Broncos don't want to pay Vaughn $18 million this year isn't because necessarily he's not Vaughn Miller anymore. It's because he had a less-than-ideal year followed by an injury-plagued season, and now he's going to be 32. That's why they don't want to pay him that. Other teams, though, you know, it's a, it's the grass is always greener scenario. And they go, oh, it's Vaughn Miller? Yeah, they're not dumb. You know, these GMs across the league, they're not chumps. They recognize that it could be a huge, huge blow up in your face thing if you throw all the money in the world at Vaughn Miller and he gets hurt again because he's 32. But I still think that name, Zach, if the Broncos did let him go, could command something pretty dang close. Because look right. back to – DeMarcus Ware, when he came in 2014, all right? Something like three years, 30 million, 10 million a year, roundabouts. That was, what now, seven years ago in terms of football seasons. Market changes shift, it's grown, it's ballooned. That 10 million, by the way, DeMarcus Ware, when he signed that north of 30, he was about the same age Vaughn is today, almost, maybe maybe one year younger. So I think it's going to be north. Like if Vaughn Miller were cut today, he could find easily, North of ten million a year from yeah. another, easily. I mean, not without even getting out of bed in the morning. Oh yeah, I, fully healthy on the open market. He's landing maybe not a five or six year deal. I, I think it'd be incentivized, but a two year, thirty two million dollar contract, like twenty million guaranteed. I'd see Von, he's Von Miller, guys. I, I mean, he's not that far removed from being the Von that we know and love. And you know what? They can afford to pay him close to franchise quarterback money because they're not paying a franchise quarterback franchise quarterback money. That's the beauty of having a young quarterback like Locke being the starter. You can devote that money elsewhere. I still happen to think maybe not at his current contract, his current rate. I do think Vaughn will be back because it just, from a personnel standpoint and a morale standpoint, it hurts the Broncos to unload him. So much just depends. I mean, it takes two to tango, obviously. But, you know, so much depends on ultimately how fungible George Payton is on the issue. And really just how open Vaughn is to any overtures. Like if, if the if the offer, Zach, is we want you to take less per year, but we're going to give you two or three additional years. You know, we're going to take you from like 18 million APY to, you know, 15 or 16, but we're going we're gonna to give you two additional years. So, yeah, you're taking a little bit of a haircut today uh, in the short term, but you're getting additional – contractual security and we're giving you an opportunity to potentially 
hang it up and retire as a Bronco, having never had to leave the, you know, your, your home turf. So if he, I would hope he would at least be open to listening to that. Now, whether or not he's willing to accept it, time will tell. Joel H., appreciate you, brother. Thank you. That's a name we don't recognize, so thank you, Joel, and uh, welcome on Super Chat. He says, love the show, fellas. Do you think the Broncos will sign Justin Simmons back? Zach, your thoughts. It does bode well, like I mentioned, for the Broncos in-house guys because in Minnesota they believed in, in retaining. What a, what a wild concept, Chad. They believed in retaining their own talent. Here they, I believe they gave Harrison Smith an extension. I, I want to say they did. So he's locked up their safety. But they put the franchise tag, I think, last year or this past season on Anthony Harris, who is an unrestricted free agent now this coming offseason. You can go both ways. I just happen to think, though, him being such a centerpiece of Fangio's defense and him being a pro bowler now, I do think they will make him an offer. Whether that resets the market, I wouldn't do that personally, but um, gun in my head, I do think Simmons it will be back, whether it's the tag or a long-term deal next season. For what it's worth, Harrison Smith drafted in 2012, re-signed. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, yo, yeah, he's he's been. I didn't think he was that old. <laughs> yeah, he's getting along in the tooth himself a little bit there. Um, all right, we've got uh, Cody Potter, I believe. Yes, there he is in the house. Good to see you, Cody. Thank you, my friend. He says, I'm sorry, but I got to disagree there, Chad. Pass rushers seem to be good until 35 or 36. Look at Calais Campbell, Terrell Suggs, James Harrison, Elvis Dumerville, and more. You know, I think the the best example of that, Cody, that it, it is is probably Dwight Freeney who played, gosh, almost until, I mean, at a high level, like as a mercenary. I did some research on this. You know, his last six years in the league were outside of Indy, right? He played for five different teams. And every time he played, he'd come in as a one-year mercenary and he'd bring home five to eight sacks. You know, that's that's teams are willing to pay for that. And I think that level of uh, interest and, and, and opportunity will always exist for Vaughn. Because, you know, as, as sports medicine gets better and players' bodies get, you know, um, for lack of a better term, they get more they, – they get better too, right? They find ways to, to advance and, and keep their, their careers going. That number is going to keep growing. But let's face it, the Dwight Freeney or, – or let's just use one of your guys here. The, the Terrell Suggs of last year, you know, he went and won a world championship uh, with, with Kansas City, but he played most of that year on a different team. He brought home like – what was it, Zach? Five, seven, eight sacks, something like that. That version of Terrell Suggs at 38 or whatever he was, nowhere close, not even remotely to the Terrell Suggs of 2012 when the Ravens won the Super Bowl. And for every Calais Campbell or Suggs or Harrison, there's a Clay Matthews who just fell off the map completely and is a shell of his former self. But Vaughn's only going to be 32 in March, a couple months from now. I mean, it's his age 32 season. That's still young. In the NFL, it's young for this planet, Chad. So it's it's young for the NFL as well. And if he can just heal from that foot injury, which he should be fully healed by now, he still has a lot of gas left in the tank. So that's why I'm I'm inclined to bring him back. I do. Th- I agree with you that I think depending on where Vaughn's head is at in terms of how long he envisions himself playing, because he's he's made a ton of money, dude. Like he's probably well. Yeah, he's in the final year. So he's made over $100 million as a player. That doesn't count endorsements or anything else. That dude's set for life. His children are set for life. He doesn't have any yet. But, you know, that dude's got more money than he'll ever need. How long do you want to play? And let's not forget, DeMarcus Ware is his his mentor, his friend, but his mentor first. And I think that, you know, class and um, legacy and, uh, you know, being aware of these things, is something Vaughn probably picked up from DeMarcus Ware because, you know, DeMarcus Ware got cut from Dallas and he signed with a contender and that contender showed him the money because it was about what he was making in Dallas that the Broncos gave him just about. And from there though, he got to see Vaughn Miller up close, how a future hall of famer handles his business. And in the case of DeMarcus Ware, he didn't want to leave Dallas. You know, that was outside of his hands. I mean, I'm sure his, his negotiations played a part in that, but, in his heart of hearts, do you think he really wanted to leave the team that drafted him and where he built his resume? No. And so I think in Vaughn's case, Zach, he ultimately tried, you know, I would think that that rubs off on him a little bit, but at the end of the day, man, it's a business. So we'll see. And then here's Kenneth. Appreciate you, bro. He says, if negotiations go uh, with Vaughn, go bad. Who should we get? 
I'm, I mean, you probably will draft a guy. I, I don't know the free agent edge rushers chat top of my head right now, but maybe Malik Reed. I'm not saying he's the full time option, but he looked pretty good last year. If Von Miller goes, I believe it would open up uh, the first round pick to be an edge guy. I don't think that's a need right now, but if Von decides to move on, or the Broncos decide to move on, then it obviously has to be an option. Without knowing the veterans, though, I, I don't know about that. But the thing about Von, one more thing I wanted to say. You mentioned the money. This guy loves football, too. I mean, what incentive did he have last year, this past season, to practice and want to play? He was already getting paid. He, I mean, it was the last couple games of the season. The Broncos were out of contention. He was running around the practice field. He was itching and dying to play. The man loves football. So I happen to think no one wants to give up money, Chad. You and I don't want to give up our salaries or, or give up more money, but I think he would do it for the greater good, not only of his career, but the the organization that made him or helped make him what he is today. Yep, I agree. And pride is always a factor, though, and you cannot uh, you know, underestimate the power that it has. But for what it's worth, here's a few of the names free agent-wise that are going to be out there this year. Uh, I'm, I'm going to use the names. I'll just give you the first five or six here, and I'll m- mention which ones are under the age of 30. Matt Judon, under 30. Melvin Ingram, Vaughn's age. Shaq Barrett, 29. Mm. Probably not coming back here. Bud Dupree, 28. Jadeveon Clowney, 28. Yannick Ngakwe, 26. That's an idea. Ryan Kerrigan, 33. Justin Houston, 32. Olivier Vernon, 31. And then Leonard Floyd, 29. So those are some of your options that you could look at to to mercenary, you know, bring them in and and try and piece together the replacement. But if you're going to do that, all of those guys are going to command pretty serious coin. All of them. Maybe a couple Justin Houston. I don't know. We'll see. But if you're going to do that, like if you're going to say we're willing to give just as an example, you know, we'll give uh, we'll, we'll give Bud Dupree thirteen million a year. If you're willing hmm. to do that, then just pay fifteen or sixteen to keep on. <laughs> that, that, that's what my take would be. Chad, am I misremembering? But didn't Ngakwe go to Minnesota this past season? Wasn't he there? It shows him. Uh, well, it shows him as a Ravens UFA. Let me see. Uh, I believe he was there first, and then they they traded him to Baltimore. Let me take if, a quick look. Maybe here. I'm misremembering, but if that's the case, that's an obvious connection yeah, to George you're right. Payton. You're right. Yeah, you're absolutely right. So that would be a free agent option. He he would command a pretty penny. He's still in his prime. He's very effective, and he would be, I think, the built-in Vaughn front runner, Chad. If Vaughn does go, but my first uh, my first inclination is to bring Vaughn back, and then literally the gap is this wide. All right. After uh, we grab Duke's great super here, we got Mark, Kyle, Mundungus, BG. And Mundungus again, and then we gotta we gotta dip on out of here. Uh, Duke, love you, bro. Good to see you. He says, "My very first super chat back in the day stays the same today. What you gonna do when the orange and blue runs wild on you, <laughs> well brother?" Done, is that? <laughs> Heck yeah, I know. You picture Hulk Hogan saying that, but dude, I love it. Appreciate you, Duke. Always dude, always good to see you and chat with you. I took my vitamins and said my prayers, Duke. Thank you so there much. You go. There you go. Um, Mark Anthony, good to see you, my friend. Appreciate you. He says, good and solid hire for the Broncos. Peyton's resume is solid, and he has drafted or signed multiple pro bowlers. Time to get ours. Y'all, the number one pond. Hashtag give them, uh, give them boys our, give them, give them boys our 30. Hashtag yum, yum, yum on Wilson. I don't know what that says. Hashtag you know. my, my dog cute as F. <laughs> what a Appreciate random collection of hashtags there. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. I love it, dude. That is a cute dog. I'll tell yeah. you, you know, and you got the you got the gear on him and everything. So appreciate Flex, you, Mark. Flex. Thank you. Um, Kyle again. Thank you, bro. He says, I had to bust out Madden in the past so I could experience getting to cut Colby Wadman <laughs> after Peyton's <laughs> excellent coach's comment. Looks like after tonight's pod, I'm busting out Madden and cutting <laughs> man's a it's the little that wins. Oh I'm man, that's dude. funny. I love it. That's dude. funny. Need, That's a good idea. Celebrity. I'm going to work out some of my inner aggression on that chat. Load up Madden and just cut my, you know, all these different, I'm going to re-sign Flacco and cut them just to, there you know, go. work out my, <laughs> my inner demons. Mundungus, the Broncos wizard, longtime listener, big time superstar. Appreciate you, Mike. He says, sorry, I'm late. Having dinner with the fam, pounding the table for Stafford. So it sounds like Mike is officially off the lock train and wants his, Pro comparison, or the guy he was probably most commonly compared to in the league, Matthew Stafford. Well, if anyone knows what Stafford has, it's George Payton, who faced him twice a year in Minnesota. So, interesting little subplot there. 
True that. Um, John, did I just usurp one you clicked on? Uh, BG, appreciate you, brother. He says, how do you guys like – who do you guys like at pick nine, if not a QB? Uh, I like – honestly, in, in, a, in a perfect world, I like Caleb Farley or Micah Parsons. Maybe an edge, depending on what happens with Vaughn, but as it stands today, that those would be my two wish list players. Yeah, you can throw in Sertan as, the, as well. You can throw in uh, Zavin Collins. Uh, those are – I agree with Chad, though. Uh, Micah Parsons is really, I think, my – non-quarterback preferred pick at nine right now on January 13th, but I would not hate it at all if it was a quarterback. They just they need to re- replenish that cupboard now. Josh, thank you for the stars on Facebook, my friend. Uh, we really uh, are running out of time here, but I don't want to miss anybody. Kenneth on uh, the Vikings, appreciate the super good question. Does, does Peyton bring any Vikings with him? Really, really good question. Um We'll see. I mean, I can take a look here at the Vikings' future unrestricted free agents here. I um, tweeted about it. They have like a they have four or five that I think. Uh, all right, let me Anthony look. Harris, the, the safety. Eric Wilson, the outside linebacker. Jaleel Johnson, the defensive tackle. He's more of a nose tackle, and they have Amir Abdullah, the running back. Those I think those four guys. And in Ngakwe, if he gets out of Baltimore, considering his connection to Minnesota, but. Um, you know, someone like Eric Wilson, outside linebacker, could be an option. He was really good this season, and I mentioned Abdullah as a third down running back replacing Royce Freeman. You nailed it. There you go. Zach's on top of it. He's way ahead of everybody on this topic. So there's there's your Vikings top unrestricted free agents heading into this off season. And look at that, Todd yeah. Davis. <laughs> there, there's a few names there that are interesting. I'll be honest with you, but. I wouldn't be – I would be – let me put it this way. I would be stunned if he doesn't somehow bring a, a, an old Viking in or something, someone he's got some familiarity with. Wow. Um, that's actually more of a coach thing, but it wouldn't surprise me. Mike, you don't have to do that, bro. Wow. But it just blows us away. Thank, Thank you. you, my friend. Thank you so much. Mundungus has shown just over the months that he's been in our community, he has shown at times just unfathomable generosity and support. And you guys – can make it out. I'm out of time here, so I can't. I can't spend too much time grabbing it. But that last book on the shelf, the big white one, blow the, you blow the picture up. That's a, a book Mike sent me from his bookstore. That uh, it's, it's the Hobbit, and it's very old and probably very valuable book from what Mike explained to me. And you know, support like this. So Mike, we love you, my friend. We appreciate you. Also, the host of his his own podcast that he has since started since joining our community back in uh, the summers at some point. Uh, called the Mile High Roundtable. So appreciate you. Proud of you, Mike. Love you, buddy. Yeah, despite your Pat Shermer fandom, we, <laughs> we do love you, Mike. Thank you. Uh, real quick here, John, we've got, uh, I think, actually, I think, let me scroll here. Bear with me one second. There's one within my grasp here. Oh, turns out, John, I had access to Mike there too, the the – there he is. We saw him already, but there he is. Appreciate you, Mike. Uh, here's um, Josh Alstrom. Also good to see you, my brother. Appreciate. It. He says, "Is it really a new GM when you know Elway said a condition is that El- is that Locke has to be the starting QB next year?" I don't think that was a condition. I really don't. I think John Elway is stepping away, dude. For real. You know, president of football operations. That title is going to be on the uh, on his door at at, uh, UC Health Training Center upstairs, Zach. But I don't think you're going to see John Elway around much for the next year. I mean, he'll be around for the photo moments and the the things like that. But this is George Payton's show. And John might have said things and the Broncos might have communicated things during those interviews to the effect of we still really like uh, Drew's upside. We still think there's something there. And that will play a role in how George – approaches it when he starts really breaking down the film and making his decisions and all that. But this is his baby. Now it really is his baby. I believe this because again, Elway, you think if uh, here's the answer to your question in a kind of roundabout way, the Broncos finished 13 and three 2020. Does John Elway relinquish GM duties? No. The reason he relinquished GM duties is because he was made to relinquish GM duties by Joe Ellis. He's out dude. Yeah. He's the figurehead now. All right. That's it. And he would hope to be consulted on some of these issues. This is George Payton's baby. And Zach, if you needed a guy who could competently and, and, and comfortably 
manage that baby, it's George Payton. Amen. The world's best babysitter or the NFL's best babysitter. It's true. I really do think Elway is just the de facto, you know, exec now in the Broncos front office. He's the Ed Donatel of the Broncos front office in title only. That's all Elway is. He'll be a sounding board. Peyton can come to his office, office if he has a question, if he has some advice he wants to bounce off of him, whatever. But he's really given over full autonomy. George Payton will have full decision-making on the roster of the coaching staff of the future of the franchise. Elway, you know, he he raised the baby, he fed the baby, he clothed the baby, now he's given the baby over, and there's full parental rights. What to George Payton? All right, we really got to rapid fire these because I got to hop off. Uh, BG in the house again. Thank you, brother. He says, if you had a choice of signing Dak or Deshaun Watson, who would you mm. pick for the same price? That's a really good question. I'm probably taking Watson, though, for what it's worth. But what's what's your answer, Zach? So if they were both free agents, if not, you know, if they didn't have to give up, you know, picks for him, uh, or if they tag, if they tag Dak and make him available on trade or something. Yeah, all things being equal, if it was just money, I'd probably take Deshaun Watson. But t- to me, Dak is is a true franchise elite quarterback. I-, I would not be crying at all if they got either one. Dario, and I think this might be. Our last nope. There's one or two left here. Let me let me double check it. But uh, appreciate you, Dario. He says, "Don't crucify me, please." But do you think bringing in Dwayne Haskins for competition would work? Commands less money and still has potential, in my opinion. I don't see that potential. I get it that he's got first, he's he's got that first round cachet still, and there's some team out there that's going to convince themselves at some point they can make him a reclamation project in their system. He just needs to learn the way we do it. I don't see it, man, because it's what happens between the years. He's a talented player. Jamarcus Russell, extremely talented cat. Between the years, in terms of football character, life priorities, things like that, it's not there. Maybe one day it happens for Dwayne Haskins and the, and the switch flips and the light bulb goes on, but miss me on, on Dwayne Haskins. <laughs> Yeah, and Dario, I love you, but I was crucifying you because that's the worst idea imaginable. I mean, this is a guy in the middle of a pandemic. He went out to a strip club. I mean, it, it's just the lack of awareness, the lack of intelligence, and we saw that with Pax and Lynch, and I, I don't want to repeat that, Chad. The Broncos really have cleansed the stench from that era. I don't want to add Dwayne Haskins to that, so no, 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 no. Uh, Team Joe Kick jumping in. Thank you for the super. He says, hey, guys, I want to be a regular in here, so hope to see you more, but I feel like we can get rid of A.J. Bouye, Jarrell Casey, Kareem Jackson, and upgrade significantly. Hey, welcome. Thank you. Hope you stick around. Love you. Appreciate the support. Nice to meet you. Connect on Twitter. We share a brain on all three of those fronts. Actually, I'm not sure how you feel on Kareem, but I agree. Bouye, catch you on the flip-flop. Jarrell, catch you on the flip-flop. Zero dead cap. Kareem, you cut Kareem, and I think there's two and a half million dead, but uh, but he's going to be 33 this year, or is it 34? I'm starting to lose track because he's so old. Oh, man, I love the chatisms I, I've learned on this show. Catch you on the flip-flop. Love hearing that. <laughs> I, I don't I, I don't see the value of Kareem Jackson. I mean, honestly, he's good in run support. I know he's popular with the players. He has KJAC TV, but he is so bad in pass coverage. He takes so many bad angles, and he's, he was responsible for so many blown coverages and touchdowns they allowed this season. For the money they can get back, Chad, they can go draft a safety, sign a safety, whatever. They're going to commit more than likely a multi-year contract to Justin Simmons. They cannot afford to pay two safeties that much coin. So bye-bye, Kareem. Kenneth, appreciate you, brother. Oh, we grabbed this one. Okay. All right. Appreciate you, Kenneth. Uh, I am Supreme 22. Appreciate the extra long episode. Hey, man, we're here for the tent pole. This is a tent pole moment. Right. If you're going to let your hair down and spend a little extra time, this is the one to do it. And Zach, when the, when the community – just keeps having topic after topic. We're here for you, man. We are your football priests. You know, the absolution, the answers. We're here to provide that. Uh, Oscar, appreciate you. He says, the way I see it, if Peyton was told that he wouldn't be making the decision, he wouldn't have taken the job. It's probably true, yeah. Boom, 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 yeah. boom. This cat had options. Yes, and he could have stayed in Minnesota. I mean, he he was the front runner for Detroit. He pulled out of that. He could have went back to Minnesota, his cushy gig there. There's a reason why he came to Denver, and I think having full autonomy and being able to construct a roster to his vision was the selling point. All right, guys, and, and you know, that's a human dynamic, all right, in terms of any relationship, you know, romantic, man, woman, um, business, professional, doesn't matter. He who 
has the least to lose, has the or she, and for that matter, uh, wields the most power. All right, George Payton, he wielded the most power in this particular situation. Yeah, there's only 32 jobs out there, but he's been picky and choosy for a long time. You, that's a great point, man. If if the condition was, hey, not only do you have to take this head coach, but you have to take this quarterback. Unless he was just sky high on Drew Locke, that's just not a, a deal he's taken when he could go get this a, a, a job with the Lions or any of the other uh, options that are still available, would have been still available to him out there. So uh, appreciate all of you guys. We got to dip out. Follow the pod on Twitter at Huddle Up Pod, the main account at Mile High Huddle. My partner, Zach Kelberman at Kelberman NFL. Myself at Chad N. Jensen. We'll be back in the saddle tomorrow night. If we didn't get to your topic, your question, your point, uh, come back tomorrow, same time, 6 p.m. Mountain, 8 p.m. Eastern, and we will try our damnedest to get to it. But, uh, man, what a night. Love the the outpouring of just passion and excitement. You can feel it, right? It's palpable energy that's that's building up in, in Broncos country. Change is here. And uh, look, if for Elway, for Ellis, it was adapt or die. And they're choosing to adapt. They're choosing to evolve. They're they're keeping it going here. And George Payton, we'll see how it how it shakes out, Zach. But it's going to be fun to cover this thing as as it unfolds. And my last thing, and then I want to serve it to you and say goodbye to everybody. Mile high salute to our superstars. Mile high salute to our supporters and our, our stars. We love you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Zach. Have a great night, bro. And sign us off. Yeah, you know about George Payton. This guy, to add on to the previous comment, he's a man of integrity, Chad. He wouldn't sell himself out to be a yes man, to be a puppet, to keep a coach or a player he doesn't want. So the fact that he took this job and then he finally made that leap from Minnesota speaks volumes to that. So it's a good situation. You mentioned changes here. It's good change. It's not change for the sake of changing. This is positive change. A momentous day in Broncos country, a franchise altering hire by Denver and by John Elway tapping his replacement. As soon as this year, guys, I know we said it last year, we hyped up the year a lock. We could not foresee the injuries or the pandemic. All things being equal, though, under George Payton's leadership, the Broncos will be back on the NFL map this season, starting in 2021 and consistently going forward. They have a winner in the front office and soon a winner on the football field. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Mailbag time, huddle up pod. Thank you for everyone and everything. And as always, go Broncos. You've been listening to the Huddle Up Podcast. Join Broncos Country's deep divers at milehighhuddle.com to keep the conversation going.